Our rear axle for our Mazilla build is done. And we're moving on to the front housing, and here we go. We, uh, as we said in the verse, in the video number one and video number two, we are now moved on to the front housing, and this is the metalhead axle that we had in the front of our Poison Spider Wraith, covered with uh, Freaky Skins graphics. And we are now uh, going to tear this down and we're going to set up the SSD Diamond Wraith housing for the front of this truck. Uh, I'm really looking forward to that. There's some cool features about that I want to talk about. Uh, we're going to maintain having the servo on the axle, which will be a nice easy setup for us in the Poison Spider or in the uh, Matzilla chassis. And um, there's an awful lot of screws here. Uh, I'm going to have to take off the servo first, the steering arms, the knuckles and C hubs. Uh, which we're going to reuse on the new build, uh, the lower link mounts, and of course on the metal head I have to take off the outside cover so I can get the axle guts out. And when I'm done tearing that down, we will have a chat about what's inside. So there we go. We got a bare metalhead housing here that's uh, now been completely stripped. And uh, we're going to use a bunch of new components when we start putting the steering gear and stuff back onto the SSD housing. Uh, but some of this is pretty straightforward. So the first thing that we need to do is uh, figure out whether it's we're going to mount it this way or this way. Um, I'm pretty sure we'll mount it the same way that the uh, metal head was, which would be like this. So uh, that puts my crown gear on the inside. Just drop that right in there. And the other thing that it gets me to do is uh, I get to use some of the new uh, SSD stuff that goes with this, like the, the top servo mount bracket. Uh, their four link mount. They've got a few little cool trusses and stuff to go on here. So we'll show that install as well. I need to get this pinion cover here, of course. And uh, yeah, I got built in scissors. There's another one. Again, I couldn't be happier that there's uh, 5x13 bearings to go in this. Fit is so exact, uh, you pretty much either get it or you don't. And uh, like I did with the other pinion uh, in the rear housing in the last video, I'm going to install the pinion shaft in here into both bearings before I start knocking on it on the inside. And the reason is because I want to make sure that they're in line. And so the bearing's not going in crooked. And if you just put in the shaft, it's a guarantee. Uh, now I need something to knock this on. Like that. And then uh, I can use this. Or this. And we'll just put this right on. There we go. Good. That's perfect. And uh, we should have no issues with that running. It's nice and straight, nice and straight, smooth. Oops, and I dropped it. Pinion fell out. There we go. Same story with this cover. Uh, put the cover on diff, and uh, as I said before, there's um, the way these diffs are made, you could have a pretty serious rock hang up right here on this big flat spot right here on the cover. Except that, because this is a front axle, all you're gonna see from the front is the diamond. 
and I'm not worried about the diamond hanging up on rocks and I'm not that worried about hanging up on rocks in reverse so uh, I'm not going to put the Delrin cover on this the skid plate on this I'm going to use all the original hardware and rip that open and uh, get these screws put in here all the way around the uh, case and we'll see what we have at the end so I got the cover hardware on you can see the huge flat that there is here that could easily be hung up on rocks should it have been the rear housing but it's not so uh, I've got that in and then of course the next obvious thing is to uh, drop the C hubs on I'll just drop in my end bearings here very very nice fit stick in my original axial drive shafts dog bones it appears that the bearing capture on the cover is a really nice fit uh, I'm not inside there to see it but considering how nice things go the bearings aren't crushed in there obviously otherwise if they were then you'd have uh, some binding issues and whatnot there's none of that uh, so we've got uh, the front housing here pretty much ready except we didn't install the truss yet and we're going to need the truss because uh, we're not using the panhard screws that are on it. There's a, there's holes here, obviously, to mount a proper panhard. Uh, we're using a 4-4 link in the front with the servo right on the axle. So this kit, also from SSD, has to be installed. And uh, I'll show you what that's all about. So this turned out kind of cool because uh, the, you can see the truss is on there now. Here's from the actual front of the truck. A nice thin but incredibly ridiculously strong bracket. And on top of it are these two bosses here that will mount the servo plate like original. And of course the four link mount centered right here. And uh, it has these two screws here that attach it to the housing but also an additional one behind the housing centered and that gives it just an ridiculous amount of strength I mean that's a really good design and I, I expect that uh, you know guys that are going to use this diamond wraith housing they're probably going to pound on it pretty good so I mean that's a good way to go original axial servo mount plate plop right on top it's uh, you just can't mess that up I don't think I don't know um, the hardware to do all this came with the truss mount so everything's there you just got to locate the right screw and plop it together um, there was no paper instructions or anything with this when I came out of the back package so I think everybody has an understanding that if you can somehow manage to get your stock axle apart you can pretty much figure out how to put this one together so there's our housing, and I think that's going to look pretty good in the front of our Matzilla build. You know, servo will fit right up there in between the shock towers, and uh, we should be able to keep the axle pretty far back so it doesn't have too much forward, uh, you know, extension, wheel based extension. I'm trying to keep it down, keep it back. Everything ought to clear just nicely there, and we got lots of movement for the shocks. The Matzilla's chassis has a uh, Tons of great design gone into it, so you can you got room for stuff. It's a little less crowded in there than it is in the factory Wraith, which is really nice when you're talking about servo spacing and all that. So this looks really tidy. Pretty happy with that. Going to drop on our C hubs here, and uh, I like to clock my C hubs with a little bit of caster, not too much, on a on a rock truck. Uh, the way that these are set up here it looks like I'm gonna get maybe a degree or two at the most and uh, I think I've either got one or two degrees or up to 
the next one would be something like 10 or 12 I'm guessing so my aluminum hubs are on C hubs just a little bit of caster there you can see just a little bit of caster and uh, drop in the hardware for those which will go right in the top here and grab my wrench these are the picky ones uh, to try to get in straight because you're screwing the screw threads are kind of like on the outside of a radius on that splined part and it's a bit of a bugger to get it lined all up in there just right goes in pretty good but keep that in mind that'll never come out and uh, the other side doop 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 where did I put it oh it's already on so we'll drop that on and uh, there we go now I'm gonna have to take apart this factory steering uh, because I need two things out of here I need the metal swivel pivots for the steering I need the bearings for the steering knuckle and I need the dog bone shaft so drive shaft so I'm gonna pull this apart here and uh, get those parts out we're done with that I think forever uh, I don't intend to use these uh, plastic C hubs or steering parts so I think that's it for those uh, we've already got this on so uh, what I think I do need, let me see now, I got one, two, three, four, these are for that mount. Um, I think I'm going to need a, some screws for these four. Oh no, I have some here, okay. One, two, three, four, yep, yeah, I got them here. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is assemble the new very flashy fancy C hub you can see here this is the orange D60 SSD hub kind of like it uh, I like the fact that it's orange it uh, will look hot, super hot with my red uh, freaky skins graphics and uh, the other thing I appreciate about these is that uh, you can use the Wraith steering arm this top little arm here you can actually mount it to the top of the knuckle kind of like a high steer pretty cool with uh, you do have to get some new bolts for that but it, it will work I'm going to drop in the outside bearing and uh, put my dog bone shaft in I know you can't believe I'm using dog bones but these things just don't break and for the for this type of truck and what this thing is going to get used for which is almost entirely slow crawling it's a pretty good option okay and I will drop in the hardware here to get the knuckle attached forever to the C hub we will put the top ones in nicely done now one thing I can verify is that CVDs have way more steering so if there's a reason if there ever was a reason for going to dog bones from dog bones to CVDs it would definitely be steering and don't be surprised if I do that on a future upgrade because I really like uh, I like I've gotten come to getting used to that amount of steering you get from the CVD setups um, I don't recommend the axial universals because uh, I've broken them without even using them uh, the, the material is really brittle I'm not a fan uh, and if you do happen to very slightly oversteer it the uni locks 
and the steering breaks off and your steering parts break off and it's just really bad. Don't use unis. No. Unless you've got mechanical steering stops, which nobody has these days, so. Now, let me get the dog bone shaft in there. And uh, we are just about done with our front axle swap using all the original parts. Let me get some screws in there. Oh yeah. Now there's a really cool thing that I want to tell you about just before we close up this video uh, about the front axle, about the front diamond wraith axle. And uh, depending on your setup, you're going to want to uh, make use of this little tip. There are currently one, two, three, four unaccounted for holes on the housing. There's one on the bottom right here. There's one right here. There are two on top right here, which would be used for a panhard bracket. And all of them are going to let in a whole bunch of dirt and water into your axle housings. And SSD figured this out, and they already gave you these little tiny set screws to put in there. And make sure you use Loctite because there's no bottom on the hole. So I will have to go through and take all these out and Loctite them all, put them back in because uh, you can screw the, th the little tiny set screw all the way through the hole and end up dropping it into your axle housing. So don't do that. But uh, it's a really, really cool thing that they sent these and what this means for SSD is that this housing becomes completely reversible. You can use it as a left side drop or you can flip it and use it as a right side drop and all the rest of the components remain the same and that's awesome. So all that said, uh, here we go. You can see I've got my set screws in. Looks really nice and tidy. Uh, the axle is on. I've got my SSD steering on there as well. And uh, this thing is ready for a servo and an install in our new Matzilla build. And we'll be back with the fourth video to talk about the transmission and drivetrain upgrades, which is next on the list. And we'll see you soon.